Tweedledee, Tweedledum, stupid fake Maxi makes the game no fun. Yeah, it's no surprise that this card is going to completely change the way that Yu-Gi-Oh is played. The Mulcharmy Perulia, we saw how much that impacted the format. Perulia isn't as strong because it only cares about cards from hand, but it's more of a equalizer because that also means decks like Flanderies that wouldn't be affected by Maxi normally now have a Maxi type card to worry about. And here in TCG, that wasn't really a big deal because a lot of decks only summoned like one or two monsters from hand. So at the very most, your opponent would either break even or plus one which depending on the deck and the board that you were making may not even matter but now we have the furos who is just going to draw every time you summon from deck or extra deck meaning it is a way bigger deal it is essentially maxi and it's close to true form a little more balanced right but it is essentially like it, it's as close to, as we're going to get to maxi without it actually being maxi itself pre-sales dropped yesterday the card was sitting at 150. you, you don't got to tell me that a lot of people are not going to be able to access this card simply due to the price and um, its rarity distribution alone if you're a budget player or if you're someone who still wants to play in this format using a deck that you either already own or that you're planning to pick up once Rage of the Abyss comes out, then you may want to know the different kind of ways that you can play around the Mulcharmies and F Fururos to be exact, right? Because Fururos is going to be the one that's more of a threat. This is, Perulia was kind of more optional. Most people were playing it more as a side deck option, where Furoros is going to be a main deck option, which is why it's going to be so crazy as a card. So I've come up with about four-ish ways that you could play around the Mulcharmy Furoros in this format. And, and it's like whether you have the money to pick up the card or not, if you plan to go to any kind of event, or if you plan to play or participate in this format, despite its obvious pay to play issues, then you may want to know how exactly you're going to play around this card. And so the very first way to really beat Fulros is just to straight up negate it, right? You have Ash Blossom called by because it's a hand trap, so it goes to Graveyard, so you can called by it. A little less common of an answer would be Cross Out, because Cross Out would mean that you would have to own a Fulros to beat it, which it would give you three more ways in deck to beat the Fulros but it also means like you'd have to put 150 or when the set drops and the and the card may hit maybe closer to, to, to 120 to 140, it's still gonna be like too much for some people to drop on a single card. So cross out is kind of like, if you can pick up at least one, I would suggest cross out because there's gonna be more hand traps in the format other than Furoros. But if you can stop the Furoros, trade one for one with the Furoros, then now they're down to four cards in hand and it's one less hand trap you have to worry about. And you also don't have to worry about them drawing like six, seven cards during your turn just because you needed to summon from the extra deck to play. The final option, which I don't know how common this one is going to be, but I still think I should mention it just because it works, is Gamma. And the issue with Gamma on the Fluoros is that Fluoros, people may not drop Fluoros the same way that they drop the Perulia because Perulia, you'd want to drop it before the main phase because it also counts for normal summons so that on their first normal summon or whatever they summon like Diabell Star or um, Poplar, whatever it is that they summon from hand, you want to get that draw for it. So you want to do it before the main phase and also because it plays around talents that way. It's just better Yu-Gi-Oh to, pl to play it before your opponent can uh, really has much agency, right? In those situations, Gamma would beat the uh, Mulcharmy. But when it comes to Fluoros and Gamma, because your opponent has to confirm that you're planning to summon from the extra deck, they may hold off on resolving the Fluoros until the main phase. And if they do, if they wait until either you normal summon or until you have a body on field to resolve the Fluoros, then at that point, they are deciding not to play into Gamma. Now, Gamma being at one is like, is it worth playing around? So what's kind of like the risk reward of playing around Gamma compared to not playing around Gamma? Well, uh, depending on the, the kind of deck you play, if you play a synchro deck and your opponent uh, Mulcharmies you and you can resolve Gamma, you could then make a Visus and Ritara to search um, Manadium reframing. And now not only have you negated, gotten rid of one card out of their hand, but you actually went plus one searching the Manadium reframing to have an extra counter trap and an extra provision against whatever your opponent may do. So if you're playing a deck that plays synchros anyway, I think this, this may be a good way to just build off of what your deck can already do. And the second option would be Cypher and Lord Omega. And so Omega would be really good because Omega can nab another card out of their hand 
by banishing itself, meaning that because they resolved or tried to resolve Fluoros early, you just got rid of two cards in their hand. So now they're starting with four cards and you still get to play your full combo without having to worry about your opponent drawing. So those are the four ways that you can interact with Fluoros by negating it. And I chose these four because I feel like they are the, the most common options that you can use to negate something like Fluoros, where like you can kind of put these into any deck. If you're playing something that requires like the Simple Engine, if you're playing like Azamina and you hard draw, uh, let's say the Driver, you can just tribute or discard the driver for something like Sinful Spoils Deception or Diabelle Star Summon. It, it's not really a big deal if you open the driver. I'd rather open driver and just be able to discard it than not have Gamma at all, right? Like if, if my engine needs to discard cards, and for example, I'm on six Samurai, I need to discard a card with Battle Shogun. I'd much rather have the driver to discard than like not be able to see a gamma because it's like one more way to stop the fluoros compared to just not having it at all so i think gamma could be worth consideration this format i, I can't really call this the second way but i still call this kind of negating fluoros but not directly negating it and that is withdrawal and lockbird so if you have a strategy that does not need to search after a certain point let's say you summon one monster and that monster searches a card from your deck to your hand and then you summon out another monster and then your opponent gets to draw again and at that point when they draw that second card it's like okay i no longer need to search i can drop the drill right here and that i think would be the most effective way to draw your opponent is like you go for all your searches as soon as you can and then once all your searches are done then you draw the opponent but now the the fluoros can no longer draw them cards for the rest of the turn essentially negating the fluoros it's a bit of like a risky thing to do because if your deck needs to search later on in the turn like end phase or like uh like with bestial magnum or something like that then you wouldn't be able to do stuff like that because droll is going to stop searches for the rest of the turn but droll is a, a good hand trap anyway right so it's just a good card to have for the format so i'm not too sure if it's worth mixing in a deck where you're playing mulcharmy but i do think it can be a good option if you're playing if you're planning to play like a, a high impact hand trap anyway like droll is still pretty good into this format it's just another option and considering that now that that is like if you wanted all of these in the same list that would be 11 cards you you can have that can stop a Fluoros from resolving. If you play Crossout anyway for Fluoros, and you also play Crossout for Droll, then, you know, the one of Droll in your deck and the one of Fluoros could also, like, you could still hard open them. So if you hard open Droll, and it's like, oh, well, instead of negating Droll now, now I'm just negating the Mulcharmy, it's not a big deal. The second way to, I think, beat Mulcharmy is to play a go second deck and that is to play a deck that does not need to go first at all to fulfill its um, engine requirements or to set up its game plan it's a, a deck that's maybe focused around battle phase um, i think tenpai and ancient gear are two decks that are like really good examples of go second decks that can just break a board and beat your opponent down and these decks will almost never play into a mulcharmy because they're almost never going to go first and it's like i guess making these decks go first maybe in a game two or game three scenario might be fine but like if you think about it game one you're not going to know what they're on right so game one they're either going to hard choose to go second if they win die roll or you're going to choose to go first unless you're also on a go second but tenpai already has a game plan for going first right they have like the trap card that helps them skip a turn ancient gear not as much now that apo's banned we don't have as many things that we can do going first but there are still lines that i would need to explore you can just set up like howitzer plus fortress there, there's a few boards you can go for going for, like if your opponent forces you to go first but ultimately I would say it's better to be forced to go first and put up a minimal board in a game two scenario than it is to try to force like setting up multiple interruptions going first when Mulcharmy is around when you know so many hand traps are going to are going to be around this format so I think you play it simple game two if the simple game plan doesn't work then you go back to playing second and at that point Mulcharmy is still going to be worthless against you because you're going second unless they literally keep their board empty because it's not just you can control no monsters it's like if you control no cards it's not even like runix where runix can just leave fountain on field like no they have to leave their board empty to resolve a Mulcharmy meaning a go second deck Mulcharmy is going to be essentially worthless against them another style 
of deck that you can play is you can play decks that do not rely on summoning much from the deck or the extra deck. I would say uh, things like Flanderies, uh, Voiceless Voice, where you're only summoning like one monster from deck. And even then, you don't have to do it during your turn. So uh, Chimera, Sky Striker, right? You, you really only need to make one Link 1 first turn, like Shizuku. You can kind of just play around with like whatever you hard open and then just go for Shizuku and you should be fine. If anything, you don't even have to Link Summon during your turn. You can just use Ray on the opponent's turn. So Chimera, they don't need to make multiple fusions on the opponent's turn. Uh, if you can just grab Chimera Fusion, uh, go into the first Chimera King and then uh, add the Chimera Fusion back. Now you have options to pivot between Guardian Chimera, you can go into the bigger Chimera Kings or like the Burfamat. You have a lot of options. Even Azamina, if you're mixing Azamina with, with another deck, you can kind of like play low to the ground, just go for the Silvera and kind of just um, set up just enough interrupts to stop your opponent from playing the game and uh, keep some follow up for, for the following turn. I also think uh, Rescue Ace could be a good option as well because they don't really need to rely on their extra deck to build a board, right? You can go like Turbulence plus uh, set four. If anything, you can end on like IP plus one of the spells in Graveyard to revive something like Preventer or to revive Hydrant. And then now you're sitting on like SP plus plus like a Hydrant or plus like any Rescue Ace plus like the two trap cards. Vanquish Soul is another one because the only real monster they need to summon going first is the Rock of the Vanquisher. So at best, the opponent is going to break even and you're sc still gonna be able to make all your plays and do whatever it is that you gotta do. A lot of these decks that I've just mentioned are pretty budget. Lowe's have dropped down to like 16 each and she's the most expensive thing in the deck. So if low is that cheap, you can grab a, a whole Voiceless Core for under like $100. I would say it's like tier two-ish. It's not even rogue. It, it, it definitely is tiered. It definitely is still like meta viable. I know I just mentioned some go second decks uh, a minute ago, but I think the third way to play around a uh, Mulcharmy that is resolved before the main phase and there's a reason why your opponent may want to resolve before main phase, and that's to play around talents, right? So you show them that, that you're on talents, they may not resolve during main phase. But by resolving before the main phase, then you can heat wave them. So if they resolve the Mocharmi too early, you can heat wave them. And then now they kind of just wasted a card from hand and you, you kind of just trade one for one. They go for a turn, they can't summon anything. I mean, they could probably like set something or whatever. Heat Wave would be a pretty effective way of like giving yourself another turn, free from your opponent's deck's strategy, getting in the way of what you want to do. So now it comes back to your turn, turn three, and you're able to play again without having to worry about a Mocharmi, unless you, you're very unlucky and they draw another one. <laughs> Ultimately, the, the Go second decks like Ancient Gear and Tenpai could play Heat Wave anyway, just so that when they go first, they kind of can shift their deck towards more like they're going second, or they can build a scenario where it's more like they're going second, even though they were made to go first. So that's why Heat Wave can be pretty good. And even Shifter. Shifter is the same idea. Like, you won't get the crazy amount of, um, benefit of heat wave where, where your opponent is locked out of like a summoning mechanic but at least with shifter if your deck is unaffected by it you can at least somewhat set up just enough for your opponent where if you know it hurts your opponent more than it hurts you then you can use shifter as like a way of like okay you kind of can't build a board right now you, the, like the best you can make is maybe like sp pass right if you get hit by mulcharmy you're, you're not really going to go for, for the uh, extra deck so they can't tie on you um, there, there's a lot that your opponent cannot do under a shifter, depending on the deck they're on. And so shifter will essentially be turn skipping them, allowing you to play again. It, it effectively makes the Mocharmi worthless if it's resolved too early. So shifter can be another good way to play through Mocharmi. So shifter and heat wave are kind of like turn skips. Like if, if you can find a way to skip the opponent's turn without really inputting much card advantage or needing to go into the extra deck, that is another way to play around Mocharmi. And the final way to play around Mocharmi is the tactics, the, the, the triple tactics. So there's Thrust and then there's Talents. Now Thrust is actually going to be a lot stronger because Thrust against a Mocharmi means that if you know what kind of deck they're on, it doesn't matter how many cards that they draw, you're gonna set something like a dimensional barrier. There's there's really no way to interact with this in modern Yu-Gi-Oh besides cross out. So 
they won't charm you at any point during your turn, you go, okay, cool. Thrust D barrier. Now their turn effectively gets skipped, right? It's, it's like the same thing as Heat Wave, except you're still gonna make your board. Because if it's a game one scenario, you don't know what deck they're on, and you you know that they're probably not on board breakers unless it's a go second deck. So if they're on a go second deck, then sure, they may be maining some board breakers, but even then, if depending on what kind of board you made, you may be able to play around some of those board breakers, but they will not be playing around a dimensional barrier. So that's what makes Thrust so strong. Uh, some people have also started considering the Heavy Slump, which is a pretty <laughs> funny card. So uh, if if they have too many cards in their hand, they're forced to shuffle their entire hand into the deck and then draw two cards. So it kind of rewards them, or it kind of rewards you for uh, giving them multiple cards. Now, at that point, the reason why this may not be as good is because Mocharmi is going to be drawing them cards. And most likely, as they draw these other cards, it's going to be other hand traps. Either another Mocharmi, uh, Ash, Imperm, Nib, the Dominuses, Dominus Purge, Dominus Impulse, uh, Valor, Ghost Mourner, Ghost Ogre. There's so many smaller hand traps that they could be drawing. Um, depending on what kind of situation that you put them in, so you'd have to summon three times from the extra deck, and then your opponent will have to draw one for turn for the Heavy Slump to be live, at the very least. And that's assuming that they have no other hand traps, no other cards to play from their hand going first. So I would say the safe side would be to summon four or five times from the extra deck, thrust, heavy slump. So that is uh, that is the best way, I think, to play around a Mulcharmy without actually needing to purchase a Mulcharmy. Now, thrust from the uh, Megatons has shot up in price. It's It started at like 20 and now it's sitting at like 35, 36. Um, so if you don't have a playset yet, you, you could potentially still be priced out from this option, which is uh, kind of tough, but Three of them cost less than a single Fluoros. So if you had to choose between getting a playset of Thrust or just getting a single Fluoros, I think I know which one is more effective. Because this can get you a game-winning card. So I think uh, the, the Thrust is worth going into in that scenario. Now, Talents is going to be good as into Mulcharmy as well. And it's because, A, Fluoros may not be resolved during the standby phase or during the draw phase, right? So so someone may decide, hey, I'm gonna hold off on resolving this Fluoros until I believe that they're gonna summon from the extra deck. Cool, so you wait till my main phase and now you're gonna get punished by Talents. Now, Talents is gonna be a lot less effective because it's like if they're drawing other hand traps, maybe you wanna look at their hand to put those other hand traps back, but you're still gonna be playing your turn, right? So. Maybe you want to do the draw two instead of the look at the opponent's hand, depending on what your uh, board or what your situation is. So if you go for like a low to the ground board, so let's say you go for like just for like an IP or something and they try to like nib you or whatever, and you have an out to nib, but they still activated it from hand, then you get to resolve talents, draw two, potentially equalize out the card advantage with uh, talents. And that could be a really good thing because now the cards that they drew may not be as effective because now you got to draw two more cards. You may have drawn into more um, back row, more hand traps, more engine. So I think talents is definitely going to be more of a staple this format than it was in last format. And uh, we'll definitely see how that goes. Um, especially because I think people are going to be on Droll as a way to beat Mulcharmy. So I think you, you are going to see Droll more often. Talents is a perfect card to, to use against Droll because now you get to like take a card out of their hand, guaranteed. One more card I wanted to look at was like Bubble Crash. And so it's like a weirder version of Heavy Slump where Heavy Slump requires your opponent to have eight or more cards in hand. Whereas like Bubble Crash says if your opponent has six or more cards in the hand or their field, then each player has to send cards from their uh, hand or field to the graveyard until they until they each have five left, which is a really weird card, right? Like, so even if your opponent resolves a Mulcharmy on you and they have like seven cards in hand instead of eight, you, you can still get them down to like five cards. Whereas like you can maybe send engine cards that you don't need, or they may be forced to choose between like potential hand traps or stuff like that, or uh, potential engine that they might have needed. Maybe this this can force them to use certain cards early, like if they had like an imperm they were planning to use at a certain time, maybe they, they like this forces out the imperm, maybe this forces out certain things. 
It's not as good as Heavy Slump, not even in the slightest, but I just thought it was really funny. And uh, I tried to look into cards that would punish your opponent for drawing, but there really aren't that many. Like, the Shared Ride is only when your opponent searches. Um, a lot of things only work when your opponent searches a card, like Thunder King Ryo, Colossus. Those are all based around your opponent adding a card from deck to hand, not by drawing. Trickstar Licorice is like the only one I could see that like punishes your opponent for drawing a card. But it's like, who's actually going to play this thing if, if you're not on Trickstar? And how many times can Trickstar really summon from the extra deck? It's a rhetorical question because I don't really know, but I don't think it's much. So yeah, those are the ways that uh, one can play around a Mulcharmy in 2024. Let me know if you guys have any more creative solutions in the uh, comment section below. Been your boy Nistro here, signing out.